Okay friends, in the last class we were talking about the oceanic crust, its composition from layer 1 it is sediment, layer 2 it is the pillow basalt, layer 3 it is seated dikes and layer 4 it is gabbro and peridotite. So, this class we are going to discuss about ophiolite which is close resembling to this oceanic lithosphere that we have discussed. Now, we are making all those layers into a package and this whole package we are thrusting it or we are exposing it at the continental continental collision system or at the subduction zone where at the surface these layers are exposed to us. Ophiolite if you see this term ophiolite it is from this Greek term that is ophio means snake and light means stone or in the other word you can say this term was introduced because the rocks were looking like snake skin. So, here for your information these are the field photographs and some ophiolites and here some of the snake skins. Now, if you can see these color and texture wise they are closely resembling to each other. So, this total package of this oceanic lithosphere that is the sediment, pillow basalt, seated dikes, then the gabbros and peridotites, this all they abducted that means it is upthrusted during the continent continent collision or during this ocean continent interaction and this abducted part it is called the ophiolite sequence and it is exposed above the sea level and often amplished at the continental rocks. So, nowadays if you are going most of this continental continental collision zone particularly if you go to this Indian context go to the northern Indian uh, plate boundary that is the indo samco suture zone around this you will find number of places this ophiolite sequence are exposed. So, let us discuss in detail what exactly the ophiolite is and when it is amplished, when it is upthrusted, what is its link or what is its uh, compositional variation and how it resembles to the present day ocean basin or the oceanic lithospheric system. So, before going to that here some of this worldwide studies ophiolite sequence are listed that is starting from this Bay of Island to Croatia. Here if you see this is the ophiolite sequence and you see this is the diagrammatic representation based on all these studies. So, this ophiolite sequence it is representing a complete sequence from top to bottom. This top one it is represent the pelagic sediment, abyssal, deep water fan, terrigenous and arc type deposit. So, this is representing layer 1 of this oceanic lithosphere if you remember the last class. Then the second one it is pillowed and massive lava pillow lava we have discussed in the oceanic lithospheric composition. Then this pillow lava has a transitional contact with the seated dikes. These are the seated dikes that we have already discussed. The seated dikes are nothing. These are the conduits, the fracture zones through which magma is supplied to form this pillow at the surface. So, then after the seated dikes it has again a transition zone. This transition is to non cumulate plutonic rock and diorite and plagiogranite that is the plagiogranite if you remember. So, this is the last one which being felsic which is intruded into the system that is the plagiogranite. Then we have mafic cumulates, ultramafic cumulates, ultramafic tectonites, metamorphic complex. So, all these layers if you compare with the oceanic layers or oceanic lithospheric layers they are closely correlated. So, that means that is why 
it is believed that the ophiolite sequence which are now abducted at the continent at the subduction zone or the continental collision zone they are nothing these are the remnant of this oceanic lithosphere and they are abducted during the ocean and continent interaction or the continent continent interaction so here this ideal ophiolite includes from bottom to top as follows the ultramorphic tectonites that is hasbergite hasbergite is nothing it is one of this ultramorphic rock which is composed of olivine and calcium poor pyroxene like the enstatite so these two components they are the uh, chief uh, mineral constituents with the olivine and this uh, enstatite they are the chief mineral component of hasbergite and mostly it occur at layers if you remember this layer gabbro so it is mostly occur as layers and sometimes it accumulates also now second is the layer cumulate gabbros and ultramorphic rocks that's layer cumulate gabbro that the layer gabbro and cumulative gabbro or the isotopic gabbros then non cumulate gabbros and diorite and plagiogranite then seated dikes or seated dibes dikes then pillow basalt then oceanic sediment that is mostly pelagic and volcanoclastic so that means if you see this layers and its composition it is very 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 close to this oceanic system or the oceanic lithospheric system now this lower part of the most ophiolites is represented by the seared and serpentinized ultramorphic that is the hasbergite hasbergite if you uh, remember it is nothing it the two cumulates that is olivine and this calcium poor pyroxenes and which is seared and serpentinized why seared and why serpentinized serpentinized because of this percolation of water through fractures through pillow basalt so it is serpentinized and seared it is seared because it the lower part of this lithosphere this system is moving with asthenosphere so that means due to this movement that means lithospheric system at the base of the lithosphere this system is moving with asthenosphere asthenosphere and lithosphere there is a shearing movement here so that's why this part is sheared and with the pronounced foliation this foliation it is the layer like appearance so this layer like appearance generally it is the compositional bending if you remember we are talking about this uh, layered gabbros so this is nothing the compositional bending and lens of dunite and chromite occur within that hasbergite so lenses of dunite dunite it is a monominal rock mostly it is composed of uh, olivine then chromite as it is forming at high temperature this chrome spinel is there so that's why chromite is sometimes associated with that so that means at the lower part of this ophiolite sequence we are getting such information and it very important thing that it is seared and it is serpentinized these tectonites are overlain by cumulate ultramorphic and gabbroic rock that have formed fractional crystallization so fractional crystallization within a magma chamber once it is crystallization starts olivines are percolated down then pyroxenes so that means collectively that form cumulate ultramorphics and gabbroic rocks some ophiolites contain non cumulate gabbros diorite and plagiogranite and the upper part of this non cumulate zone so there are certain exceptions are also there so may not be some or everywhere there will be some cumulation there may be non cumulate gabbros diorite and plagiogranites the seated dike complex it is lies above the non cumulate gabbroic zone so although dominantly it is diabase dikes are there it ranges in composition from diorite to pyroxenite and in this composition its dike thickness also varies from 1 to 3 meter so now if you see here these are the dike though this photographs can be tilted like this uh, or rotated uh, clockwise so that you will find this is a dike 
and we have chilled margin. These are the chilled margin. So, chilled margin they are formed when a new dike intruded into the old dike. So, it is a cumulative environment where water is percolated down, a new magmatic system is intruding to a relatively cool system and it is suddenly getting cooled due to this percolation of water. So, that is why this margin is chilled. So, it same happens in the pillow basalt also. In the pillow basalt when it erupts it within, the, within the system, the margin is chilled due to this water presence of water. So, that is why you will get a chilled margin, a balloon like margin at the uh, periphery of this pillow basalt. Similarly, this chilled margin it is found in the seated dikes. So, one way chilled margin are common in seated dikes. So, a feature generally interpreted to reflect vertical intrusion in an oceanic axial rift zone where one dike is intruded in the center of another as a lithosphere spreading. So, that means one side it is chilled, another side it is chilled. So, that means we are getting the chilled margin which is representing the subsequent dike intrusion into the new dike system. The uppermost unit of ophiolite is the ocean ridge basalt occurring at the pillow and flows hyaloclastic basias. So, this uppermost unit of the ophiolite is the ocean ridge basalt and occurring as a pillowed structure. So, that we have pillow structures we know and we have hyaloclastic brexias that means broken into different pieces that is hyaloclastic brexias. In the thickness of this unit varies from few meter to 2 kilometer and the pillows from honeycomb network of individual pillows ranging up to 1 meter across and a few dike caught into pillow basaltic system. So, here some of these field photographs of the pillow. Now, you see the arrangement of this pillow in such a way that it is forming a honeycomb structure and through this honeycomb structure somewhere the dikes are intruded to the system. Many opiolites are overlain by sediments of a pelagic and abyssal or arc depositional environment. Pelagic sediments include radiolarian charts, red fossiliferous limestone and metalliferous sediments and abyssal sediments. So, this all these sediments are nothing, this is representing the layer 1 of this oceanic crust. So, opiolite it is emplaced and in the collisional origin may be of three mechanisms. What are the three mechanisms? First mechanism is the obduction or upthrusting of the oceanic lithosphere into a passive continental margin during continental collision. So, now you see we have one continent here and we have a ocean basin and here another continent here and it is the same ocean basin it is uh, common on the both system. Now, both continental system they are coming close to each other and we have a mid oceanic ridge here earlier. As now, this two continental system they are coming for collide. So, that means the oceanic layer here which was earlier now due to closure this of this continental system they will create folds, they will be folded and gradually they will close again it is coming close to each other finally, there is more tightly folded and then it will be up thrusted that will thrusted. So, this continent continental collision zone once these two continent collide. So, this up thrusted oceanic system which was earlier here now they are up thrusted and lying here as a ophiolite. So, this is the one of these mechanisms. Then second mechanism is that splitting of this upper part of the descending slab and abducted of this thrust sheet into the former arc. So, now you see once we have a continental system and we have an oceanic system which is subducting down. So, this subduction is not very easy. So, here it is a high pressure environment, high pressure environment. So, that is why once it is subducting down and we are pushing it from this mid oceanic ridge and here this system, this continental system is there and the subduction. So, that means there will be 
thrusting because it is not an easy process. It ne needs tremendous force. So that is why part of the system is thrusted up and it is remained here and it forms ophiolite. And the third is an addition of a slab of the oceanic crust at the accretionary prism of this arc system. So here we have a continental system and we have oceanic system and this is the trench and finally we are creating an accretionary prism here. That means the sediment which was earlier deposited on this oceanic crust, these sediments are scrapping off here and forming an accretionary prism. So now this accretionary prism is here, this is continent and the same mechanism which is discussed here that means it is at a high pressure zone or high stress zone. So the part of the system is thrusted and this thrusted system this becomes a part of this accretionary prism. So there may be the emplacement of opioid. So these are the three possible mechanisms. So how these opioids are emplaced. Opioids usually occur in collisional origin and their association of the deep sea sediment, basalt, gabbros and ultramafic rock suggest that they are originated in the oceanic lithosphere and subsequently thrusted upon their continental setting by the process known as abduction. So this abduction setting, it is nothing moving up. So as we have discussed in the previous slides, every three mechanism, so it is demonstrate that it is moving up rather moving down. So this moving up of thrusted, it is called abducted. So here at this continental continental collision zone, this system is abducted, part of the oceanic lithosphere, it is abducted now, abducted. So that is why it is called abduction. Similarity of this opiolite with the oceanic lithosphere is supposed by the chemistry, this metamorphic grades, the presence of similar ore minerals and the deep water sediments. So that means if you remember our earlier slides here we are discussing all these systems that is defining the oceanic lithospheric composition and is oceanic lithosphere system which are discussed in the earlier class. So that is why it is believed and uh, it is really that the abducted oceanic lithosphere and this continental continental collision zone is giving rise the opiolites. Now in Indian context if you see this geological map of India, you see at the northern boundary of this Indian plate mostly the Indian subco suture zone and other suture zones where this Indian plate is ending. Here this red patches are nothing, these are the exposure of the opiolites. So that means here we have this Indian plate and we have this Eurasian plate and this oceanic lithosphere representing the Tethys ocean, it is lying here and the Himalayan sediments that is nothing the Tethys ocean sediment, they are crumpled, folded, thrusted, metamorphosed and now forming the higher Himalayas system. So that is why those red patches representing the opiolites are nothing, it is the abducted part of this Tethys ocean which is already consumed below the Eurasian plate. And this is the same one, if you see this distribution starting from the Indian plate 1 and together and all these opiolites then arranged in such a manner that is defining the suture zones orientation. Now the question arises when it formed, whether it formed during this uh, continental continental collision or it is before that or after that. So that to provide this exact date of formation of opiolite, worldwide number of opiolite sequence that were dated and the subduction were also dated. So it is found most of these opiolites, they are formed much, much, much before then the subduction starts. Before if, because if you remember our Wilson cycle, the Wilson cycle first it create a rift basin and with further, further rift it created a ocean basin and with further rift we are creating the mid oceanic ridge system and this oceanic 
basaltic layer it forms started forming. But at that time started forming that means at up to that time there is no subduction. Similarly, after also few million years there will be no subduction, there will be only the spreading that means the new ocean basin is created, the basaltic magma is coming out and it is pushing both side into opposite direction. Now, this to maintain this total area constant, now somewhere these two blocks has to go down. So, that is why the subduction starts. Now, imagine the subduction is starting millions year after the formation of this oceanic crust. So, now the oceanic crust is formed and the subduction has not started. So, that means this area has to accumulate because the area has to compensate. So, there will be folding, there will be thrusting, so like that. So, that is why during that time the part of this oceanic lithosphere that is thrusted up. So, once they are thrusted up, so now if you imagine here we have a mid oceanic ridge here and we are filling with it with basalt and we are putting it in two different directions. Now, we have to subduct it here, this ocean basin we are subducting it, subducting it here and this is the continental system. So, now imagine before subduction starts there will be some folding, there will be some thrusting. So, once it is thrusted up, it is thrusted, this is the thrusted block, it is thrusted up. So, at the subduction zone these thrusted blocks they behave as a speed breaker. So, that once this uneven topography is created due to this thrusted upon of this oceanic lithosphere, once they reach at the subduction zone, this part, this part and this part they are separated here, this has broken off, they can chopped off. So, it remains there and this becomes the ophiolite. This other lower part it is subducted down, however, the upper part is chopped off here, this is called the ophiolite. So, that means ophiolites are forming much earlier than the subduction starts. So, that is why this dating of event indicates that the abduction of many ophiolite occurred very soon after the creation while the young and hot oceanic lithosphere is that. That means during this oceanic lithosphere formation just after the formation ophiolite started forming because to compensate this motion to compensate the area of increased area we are here, however, we have not created subduction so far. So, that is why to compensate that we are folding it to thrusting it like that. So, these ophiolites are much 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 older than the subduction zone. Continental collision however, normally occurs a long time after the formation of a mid oceanic ridge. So, that the age of the sea floor abducted should be considerably greater than the collisional zone origin. So, here some of these ophiolite sequence they are correlated also uh, worldwide. Now, it is correlated with the observed ocean lithosphere and you see all of these ophiolite sequence they are similar with the present day oceanic lithosphere. However, the thickness may vary from place to place that we have already discussed the thickness that depends upon the rate of spreading, the magmatic supply, the sedimentary supply, so like that. So, though the thickness of the sophiolite sequence varies from place to place, but the layering and the order of layering it resembles to the present day oceanic layer or oceanic lithospheric layer. Now, if you see here the mid oceanic ridge system and it is moving to oceanic plates, they are moving from away from each other, this is the transform fault which is separating and many of the obvious lights are altered and tectonized because of the way in which they are uplifted and emplaced in the upper crust. And in this graph if you see once this oceanic lithosphere is formed at the mid oceanic ridge or the initiation of this mid oceanic ridge formation, the rate of magma supply is more and gradually with distance it decreases, with time it decreases. Similarly, the dike intrusion is more and gradually it is decreasing. However, the half spreading rate is less and gradually it increases and it becomes constant. So, that means you see 
we have lava accumulation which is more however the spreading rate is less so that means there is accumulation there will be abduction there will be folding so like that so that's why before reaching to the subduction zone so this oceanic lithosphere is become thrusted this is folded like this so once it is reaches here this abducted part this is chopped up and remaining here as a opiolite so there are more than one type of opiolite first one has the complete suite of units that means starting from the layer 1 to this mantle that is one suite and another is other consists solely of deep sea sediments pillow lavas and serpentinized peridotite so only the upper part remains and the lower part up to this oceanic lithosphere that is not there so there is one group which is representing the whole another group which is representing only the fewer few meters or few kilometers depth so why it is happening so this is other consists solely of deep water sediment pillow lavas and serpentinized peridotite with or without minor amount of gabbro if present these gabbros often occur as intrusion with the serpentinized peridotite but in the here we have layered gabbro we have isotopic gabbro but here we are getting the gabbro which are of intrusive in nature why it is happening because this type of crust is thought to form when the rate of formation of this crust is very slow and is limited magma supply rate is there that's why we are not able to create the full fledged and the ideal sequence of this opiolite rather we are getting this type of second type of opiolite where the gabbros are occurring as intrusives so this type of environment is restricted to particular type of geological setting one is the vicinity of a transform fault at the low accretion rate so here if you see the transform fault here and vicinity of this transform fault is the low accretion rate because it is consumed or it is compensated by the transform fault movement and in the initial stage of ocean crust formation where non volcanic passive continental margins are there so here also if you say at the initial stage of formation here this half spreading rate is less and gradually it is increasing however the magma supply is more so these are this conditions where the second type of opiolites are formed however the first type of opiolites most of this oceanic ridge are characterized for because of this oceanic moho is exposed in many opiolites it is better known as continental it is better known than the continental moho because continental moho it is hardly exposed somewhere because it is a depth of about 40 kilometers and this opiolite the oceanic layers or the oceanic moho it is exposed there so that's why this moho's characteristics compared to the oceanic system and this continental system the oceanic system moho is much more understood as compared to this continental moho studies of opiolite and pf velocity measurements are consistent with the basement and oceanic layers being composed largely of mafic rock metamorphosed to the green schist and epipolite phases so when it is altered or metamorphosed this says that this metamorphism occurred up to green schist phases or epipolite phases although opiolites contain minor amount of ultramafic rocks and the felsic rocks they are much less variable in lithologic and chemical composition that says that this oceanic crust is rather uniform in composition so that is the beauty of this uh, uh, opiolite so it says about the present day oceanic lithosphere it says about the uh, past abduction system it is past subduction zones present so like that in mineralization what is happening here what is the magmatic properties which is magmatic mechanism which is going on at the lower crustal level depth or the, the mantle level depth so that can be studied from this uh, opiolite sequence and uh, now if you are coming to this ocean basin component 
So, this ocean basin it, there are different components. So, one component is the mid oceanic ridge. This is the mid oceanic ridge where the new oceanic lithosphere is being created. So, that means the crust, the moho, and this upper part of the mantle which are created here. And this created oceanic lithosphere it travels up to the subduction zone and where it descends down and it is contributing formation of this asthenosphere and again it recycled here. So, this system it is behaving as a conveyor belt. Next is the ocean basin, the ocean basin itself, it is geography, it is sediment, it is depositional environment, it is tectonic setting, all this the other component of this oceanic crust. Then the volcanic island, you can say the volcanic islands are here, once this system or this uh, lithosphere descends down and its partial melting takes place here and due to partial melting here the magma rises and forming the island arc magmatism. Apart from that within that ocean basin we have some hot spots as we know it is D double prime layer where, where this magma is derived and this is also one component of the ocean basin. Then it is a trench once it is subducting down here the, the deepest part of this earth crust that is the marina trench is there uh, where this is also one component of this uh, ocean basin. Then the back arc basin, the back arc basin is somewhere here if it is subducting down a new ocean basin is created and this is called the back arc basin. This becomes uh, tectonically active with later times. So, these are the components of this oceanic crust and within tectonic setting these different components they behave differently and it has its own uniqueness that how this tectonics from one region can be distinguished from other. So, in the later class we will talk in detail about these different components, what is their role in plate tectonics, what is their mineralization and what is the fault formation or this basin formation, hydrocarbon formation or other aspects too. So, thank you very much, we will meet in the next class.